Hi everyone, uh, let's continue to take a look at two-way tables, but this time I am going to let Excel do a lot of the calculation for me, which can be handy when you're working with larger tables of data. Um, now there's a lot of different ways you could format this, uh, but to get started I have simply put in a table that shows, again, the the college graduate level population of a liberal arts college um, for English graduates, foreign language, history, philosophy, political science being the first variable, male and female being the second variable. And I have some of the totals here. Um, now what we've done in the past is uh, a very simple um, formula which is using the sum. Uh, if I want to see how many total English majors I have, I can use the sum formula and then get 225. And remember, because these are positional, um, I can now take this bottom corner and drag this down, and it adds across going and says, well, here's the total um, number of English majors. Uh, I can do the same thing uh, to put up a totals column um, down here and say, well, I want this to be the sum of all of the majors, um, or all the women in majors, and I'm going to drag that across in order to uh, find the totals that I have in all. Sometimes just to organize some things or arrange it, some people will put in um, in Excel like some lines in here. So if you want to make it look pretty, you can. Like I can highlight these ones and tell it that I want to have a border on the bottom. Um, maybe I want another border on the bottom here. Sometimes we use a double border uh, when you have when you have uh, those. I don't think you can do that in Google Sheets. And I'm going to put uh, kind of a, a right side border here and here. So anyway, you have some options to make it look nicer. Some people color code things, all that kind of good stuff. But this basically lets me do that. Now, here's where uh, it starts to get a little bit trickier. Let's say that I want to find that marginal distribution. So I want to know what percent of students are taking each major. So I'm just going to label this as percent of students. All right, This is the total number of students. I have to remember that in order to do that, I'm always going to divide two things. Um, I'm going to divide the number of students that are taking the major divided by, in every case, 529. Now when I click on 529, if I were just to hit enter and then try and drag this formula down, remember it's positionally aware, um, it's doing, and you'll look, cell D2 divided by D7. This next one is doing D3, and it moved everything down one divided by D8. That's not what I want to happen. So what we end up having to do, and there's a, a shortcut for doing this, is in this actual cell formula, if you want to anchor a cell, meaning I always want you to divide it by a specific cell, we use a dollar sign to anchor it. Um, in this case, it means I'm anchoring row D and, um, or excuse me, column D and row 7. So there's a double dollar sign there. It's basically anchoring it to this one cell. All right, and then when I drag this down, the formula does not change the thing for D7. Notice it's always divided by D7. Now, doing that can be kind of cumbersome to have to go in and type in dollar signs. So we use a keyboard shortcut um, that is function 4 on Google Sheets. So I could say equals 225 divided by 529. And right after I click that, if I hit function 4, it starts cycling through different ways to anchor that. So I'm going to hit function 4 and anchor both of them, and then drag this down. Another thing, just to kind of clean this up, I want this to be displayed as a percentage. So with it highlighted, I'm just going to jump over here and say format this as a percent. You can get into um, some more things like I don't want that many decimal places or I want more decimal places, however you want to do that. Um, but now this is quickly telling me the percent of students that are English majors. Um, it gets a little bit trickier, and I'm not going to put this in the table. It gets a little bit trickier if I want to ask different questions. Like perhaps I want to know um, what percent of women take each major. So remember, I am now talking about of women. So for this row, 
I am going to say what percent of women are English majors? What percent of women are foreign language majors? So remember, the of women is my denominator. So I am going to do equals um, 136 English majors divided by 271 women. Function 4 to lock that in. And then I can just drag this down and say there's my um, percent. And I'm going to take away some decimal points. Say 50% of women are English majors. Perhaps I want to know the percent of major that are women. Same question, it seems like it. But now I'm asking what percent of each major um, are women. So now I'm saying, well, there's 136 women out of 225 English majors. Notice the of major. Now I need the total of each major for this. So I'm going to do equals the number of women divided by the total in that major. Lock that second cell in, drag it down, do some percentages. Now I have that question answered. I can do the same thing for um, the other ones, and I'll do that now, um, and I'll, I'll pause it uh, while I put those in. All right, so I've done the same thing, and now I know that what percent of men are English majors? Um, I know 89 out of 225. 25 out of 86 men, um, or excuse me, what percent of men? 89 out of 258. Um, and 25 out of 258. That's the percent of men that take each major. And then what percent of each major are men? That's 89 out of 225, 25 out of 86. The percent of each major that ends up being a man. Uh, keep in mind, these over here, all these ones that were a little bit more difficult to kind of think through, those are conditional variables. Um, or excuse me, a conditional distribution. Whereas um, this one, the probably the easiest one that ends up over here is the marginal distribution. Marginal distribution is just the total of all my English majors and what percent of the total population um, is my marginal. Conditional, I start to ask that question. Um, and we'll see it a little bit differently when we are working on probability. We'll see that we ask this question of um, what percent of uh, of English majors are women and English majors. Um, you know, it's kind of different ways of, of saying it. But this is the conditional ones, uh, where I'm giving it a condition like percent of women, percent of men, percent of a major, all of those things. Um, but that is our, our distributions uh, as we take a look at them. All right, so when I want to insert some charts, let's say I want to sh just show a, a chart about um, women in the majors. So I'm going to insert a chart. Remember when you're using categorical variables, now we actually do want to use the bar chart or the pie graph. So in this case, I'll put a part chart in here and you'll notice it just shows me the English majors, how many there are, and it's just a count of them. So not a histogram in here. I'll do the same thing um, with a pie chart. Um, just say I want the pie chart and it just shows me the percentage of uh, people that are each of those majors. So it goes along with the what percent of women take this major. Um, other ideas, again, now that I, I have this, and a lot of times I would copy this, and I'm actually going to try it without. Um, I would copy this and put it over here, which is why I left a, a space on there. Oh, I hit the wrong button over here. Uh, so copy and paste, and I can do um, a chart doing it right here. What percent of women take each major? So I could do, and it'll be exactly the same chart uh, that I had just a second ago, only now it's formatted as percent instead of the number. Um, so you can do those charts with, with any of these. I'm actually going to try it once by just highlighting here and control click over here so that I've highlighted two completely separate parts and insert a chart. Um, and I want it to be a, let's go with a bar chart again. And I'll insert that. And you'll notice it still caught the fact that here's my labels. And then here is my percentages. 
So a bar chart and a pie chart are the two-way table charts of choice, and we figured out a lot of different percents in here by, by working with them this way. Um, you could put all these together. It's a little bit more complicated looking chart, but let's insert a chart with everything on there. Um, and you'll notice we have kind of a number of different ways you could break this down. Um, here's one that just shows f male and female, um, you know, so you can see the different sets of them. But there's a lot of different types of charts that you could use. Again, we usually break them out separately anyway. Um, here's an interesting one. I don't even know what it is. I didn't even look. Um, but anyway, that is using Google Sheets and some uh, cell referencing in order to create uh, different charts for a two-way table.